Okay, we're gonna start now. And our topic today is the one fifty, a uh, one five and ten. So this is a kind of standard for us. And the background of it is that currently we're entering the era of the cloud computing, and uh, the container application scale is expanding. So the concurrent failures of it are more and more, and there are many reasons for it. Some of the manual mistake, and some of them are hardware issues that may lead to the failure of the container. So, do we have any one solution that can help us to fast recover the container failure and improve our stability, and to identify the failures and to solve it without improving the cost? These are the challenges for us. So, within Alibaba, we are operating、um, millions of the.、Um, Container. So by analyzing these samples, and we have postpone, postponed the idea of one, five, and ten. So these are the, the four phases that we're gonna talk about. First, we will talk about what is the definition of one, five, and ten. So you don't know or what is one, five, and ten. I will just tell you about the definition of it. And second, we have a.、Um, Simulates failure, and also we have done some of the review of it. So for the timelines, what operations we've done, and whether they have reached our final goals, we will have a review of it. And the third and fourth is through some measures, whether it is in a procedure, the tools, and technology, the methods in these aspects, how can we achieve the goal of the one, five, and ten. And we are using、uh, doing it in two directions. First is、uh, do it on the offline, and next is the online. So what is the definition of one, fifth, and ten? You can see that these are some of the big numbers. So what is one? One means that we need to identify the failures within one minute. For example, when we are、uh, dealing with the problems, if we can find them at an early stage, it is quite helpful for us. Second. Five means that we need to identify the problems、uh, in five minutes. Only by identifying the problems, we will know how to solve them and to、uh, just recover it. And ten, which means that we need to recover the failures within ten minutes. So we need to find the problems within one minute and、uh, identify the problem in five minutes and、uh, recover it in ten minutes. While we are having these kind of goals, these are based on some of our historical analysis. We have identified identified that some of our failures can achieve the goal of one fifteen, but some of the failures are exceeding the scope. So we think that maybe one fifth and ten is a relatively a good and suitable standard for the failure recovery. So once we have、uh, set this goal, these can help our different teams to improve our capability in terms of the failure coverage, to reduce the length of the failures, and to reduce the impact of it, so that finally、uh, reaching a goal that、uh, the whole project. Don't have too much failures or have no failures. So、uh, we can see that for failure, what are the mistakes we have made in this, and why we didn't achieve the goal of one five and ten, five and ten. So you can see that this is the incident timeline. We have deleted some of the un unrelated information. This is a agent in the host machine. The release of.、Uh, Agents cause some problems. We have released agent in、um, three seventy, and they are delivered in three batches because you know that when we are released, and、uh, it needs to be done in a gradual process. If we just send it in one time, some of the results cannot be controlled. And also in four thirty, we have released the second. Batch and in 455, our newly released agent, its new characteristics are functioning now, and we have reached, we have received the alarm, and we have do the third batch of the release, and some of the pods are already influenced, and they have already stopped the release this time. And I would not further illustrate the following points. I would just. 
tell you about our analysis. So while uh, we, before we are an analyzing the timelines of these failures, I want to show you a very good concept that is the um, afterwards analysis. That is a very good idea from Google and SRE. That is, we need to learn from the failures, and we need to learn the lessons from the failures so we can avoid to make the similar mistakes next time. And we can use this concept to see these problems. We just uh, released it in 3.17 in the afternoon, but we received the alarm in 5.50. And in 6, we didn't identify the problem only until 7 o'clock PM we use uh, rollout. We have recovered this failure. So we can see that as the infrastructure, as the underlying infrastructure, so when we're operating any kind of behaviors, we need to be quite cautious because some of the pro small problems in the underlying infrastructure might trigger quite good problems in the top level. So I think that you may have the similar feelings that we need to be especially cautious and careful in any operation. So in our infrastructure team, the stability is a very important elements and factor. So your character, your performance and how many value or how many business you're supporting are the uh, following issues. So if you don't have the foundation of the stability, you don't have the other values. And we can look at the failures. So this is the very typical problems caused by the release. You can see that we didn't achieve the goal of 1, 5, and 10. So it happened in 3.17 afternoon and only be solved at 7 o'clock p.m. So through this kind of uh, failure, what have you learned? And what problems are exposing now and how to rectify it first? So some of the our staff, they are not sensitive to the potential failures. And uh, even though they have received the alarms, they didn't just deal with it at the correct time. And second, I think we uh, are lack and short of the risk awareness. So for the new features that are not fully validated and directly go online, this is a big problem. And the third is that we don't have a we should have a progressive deployment. They are not perfect. And whether these, whether uh, it problem is caused by this release or not, we need to find what is the root causes of it. And fourth is that uh, we are lack of the observability. Actually, uh, when we release in the three. 17 and we have got alarm in 5 o'clock. This is really not good. If we want to achieve the 1, 5, and 10, this goal, the alarm should be identified the problems within several minutes. And the fifth one is that uh, we lack of the solutions to stop loss in time. So we need to solve the problems in a timely manner. And uh, we are having a great way distance with our goal of 1, 5, and 10. And how can we improve? We can just do it in two directions. First is the offline direction. The second is the online direction. On the offline direction, so uh, we cannot avoid having failures. But how can we identify our setbacks through these failures and to learn from it and to avoid making the similar mistakes next again? This needs us to have a uh, kind of a review after the occurrence of these failures. The second is that how can we solve all of these uh, issues before it actually happened? This just requires us that in our daily work, we need to put stability as a very important factor to consider. And third is that we need to do some really good practice of the failures. Through this kind of practice, we can see that some of the problems that we didn't notice in our daily work. And also, uh, everyone can be familiar with the whole procedure. 
uh, so we won't be quite nervous when we're really facing this kind of problem. And on the online aspect, we can uh, improve it in four layer. First, it's we need to improve the observability, and the second is that we need to do it in a progressive way to do the great scale. And the uh, uh, third one is that we need to have a rollback, and fourth one, we need to have a auto healing. So for some of the problems, they are happening every day and every time. So for these kind of small issues, if we don't uh, just deal with them in time, Actually, uh, these small issues can accumulate to big issues. And next, uh, let's come to the third chapter. It mainly talks about how can we improve our stability through the offline method to reach the goal of 1, 5, and 10. Because I don't have a good English level, and some of the words I don't know how to describe it, so mainly I just write it down in Chinese. I may just uh, I put some time on talking about this point. So actually when we review the process, we put it into a four phases. First is occurrence, the second phase is detect, and the third phase is to identify the four phases recovery. And then we have these like different points of time and uh, to do the analysis, all those key time points to find out what are the things that we are not good at and we need to improve. So first is when the these incident failure occur and uh, when does this failure occur? So, so what is the root cause of these kind of failure and uh, can we avoid similar problem of failure in the future? The second point phase is detection. So when did we observe the failure? And then how did we find it? Manually or automatically? Who found it? Is it from the business side or our, or our people found it? And then the process we should ask ourselves, can we do it quicker, find it earlier? And because our goal is to identify it in one minute and then to make a step further. Can we even notice the failure in the device? And that will make us even better at failure detection. And the third phase is failure identification. This will take much longer time. And so the key points that we need to pay attention to is the responsible person and when did that and when did does that person take over of that failure and uh, when did we find the root cause and when did we find the solution to stop the bullying and then the responsible person whether he or she handed it over effectively or in time and if he or she failed to do that what is the root cause whether because of a holiday or he or she doesn't respond to email etc and then also the method for identification do we find if it's either monitoring or checking the logs and then also do we need we find the root cause of the solutions through manual detection and then is there any other solution? And then the fourth phase is recovery and then we need to focus on two time points. Is the first is the system recovery time and the second is business recovery time. So during the recovery, so what is the method or is it rollout or other methods and uh, how long did it take for the execution of recovery? And uh, the last one is in the future, can we recover even quicker? So this means that we need to lower the cost and uh, respond quick, more quickly and uh, even prepare in advance. So, have some precautions. so this is actually a cost model, the kind of like failure prevention. And actually you have this kind of experience. So during the development process, we need to think about stability ahead of time. So what is the problem? It, is, it doesn't mean no failure, that means you need to minimize, minimize the impact of the failure and if 
You need to have this kind of like automated process of failure detection and failure treatment that, so that we can minimize the impact it has. So all the way from the line to admission, we need to have this kind of like failure prevention. And then we also need to have this kind of like chaos engineering, kind of like a rehearsal. So we have to prepare, inject, test, and now for the kind of optimization. So if we don't have this kind of like a stimulation, we will never find where the failures are when they actually occur. So we need to have training exercise and we know our own weakness and also to increase the capability for us to pull in those kind of like emergencies. Yeah. And also, next we I'm going to talk about how can we achieve the goal of 1.10 online. So, so this is actually your progress at the point. I need to know that we can have this grey scale or grey movies and then the, what are the plans? Do we have a perfect plan? Actually, no, because we need to actually have this kind of a grey scale with these according to your specific situation. And uh, we have online mechanical rooms and the daily mechanical rooms. We have testing environment and uh, the risk is lower in mechanical room and also in terms of the faster. Also, we, we divide the business into core business. For instance, some offline mini new retail, for instance, a home. And uh, we actually we will that deal directly with the business side and uh, it's quite important for us to do this kind of things right. And so we start from non key business, starting from there and all the way to our key businesses. And we need to save enough monitoring time and we will do the release. We need to actually notify the release system and this release system will help us to do the rollback. We need to make sure that all the online strategies to make sure the strategy of stopping loss is ready before enforcing any changes. So all actually for stopping loss that we actually do have a lot of methods that for instance we can do the rolling out and a lot of other plans. So when we treat the failure, if you have a lot of those experiences, you may have like restart and then reload you know, etc. and release it again. So when we do when we actually want to stop the loss, we need to simplify the process and have a low cost procedure that can be adopted to stop the loss. And when we do it online, the simpler the better, because if it's complicated, the other failures might occur. We also have observability. The observability means we need to have a good monitoring process, our internal monitoring process is for the infant stock is actually consists of Thanos and Prometheus. Thanos is kind of like it's is an interface, kind of like a project working to enhance Prometheus, Prometheus. and uh, the, we have control plane and control panel and uh, we have a PSO studio and we will want to make sure all the components to provide all the metrics and then the metrics need to include all the interfaces and uh, all the other metrics and uh, to use to measure whether the components work well. And also the second part of the data is not. And we have exporter 
For instance, we might have CP, like data of CPU and the data about the container, and also like the D and the daemon and then some other metrics. But it's not enough to only have metrics because all those are like resources type metrics. And we also need to observe. Of normalities and the things that are just not normal, and then system D, for instance, it might have a problem, and we need to find whether demon or Kubernetes they have like alert error alerts, and for users, then they might already receive the alerts, and it might be already be too late. So on that basis, we will have this like a node problem with Natus. So it's called MPD, and we have this kind of augmentation of MPD. So MPD is node problem detector. It's a demon that detects node problems and reports them to API server. So in community, at the MPD does not meet our demands. And as I mentioned, because our monitoring process is based on Prometheus, but then the community does only report those kind of like data to API server. So we need to further strengthen by adding an adapter of Prometheus and to turn those results into metrics that can be further pulled by the Prometheus and also. In addition to Prometheus, we also use have other monitoring system. So, for instance, and financial, they use another set of system to monitor all the data, and we need to kind of use interface to connect to different platforms. So, this is an MPD structure that we have. And uh, we will have a next quarter. And we will, by this, we will have this kind of like uh, Prometheus adapter. And the exporter will send the metrics to Prometheus adapter. It will work connect with our back on back end monitoring and uh, storage system. It's actually through this, um, actually our the maintainer, we actually have communicated with the community. I think it is quite necessary for the PR and uh, for the development, the contributors. They actually have added PR in the community. And for the MPD, we have actually upload those alerts to Grafana and Dingo, but um, it is not enough. Only uploading the data, we actually have an automated recovery. So this small system can actually identify some potential problems and uh, to have some simple recovery. So this is kind of like auto healing. So we could see that a lot of like detector. So when we run the container and uh, also in the process that we can identify all the failures that we have and uh, they can be obtained by MPD. So this, those are some components of MPD and MPD we then we put them to Prometheus. So for instance customer detector, Cannot detect system data and uh, all those components and the Prometheus components will find the healing methods for each failure and then we will have a remote method. And uh, for instance, a simple example, we all know that in the container we have a less power. The so one end is in the container, the other is in host. And for, uh, so for the end of it is in host, we do notice a problem that is the bias might just exit the gateway, and uh, this will actually cause network failure in the container. So for this failure, we actually have a detection 
that, for instance, each network card, whether it's connected, and uh, if there's any failure, we can actually check the failure through Prometheus uh, to find what is the corresponding node and uh, to run the auto healing. And uh, by doing the healing process, we will actually put in a network card. So all those are just uh, simple solutions. For more complicated issues, we cannot run auto healing because we will have to go through the route that by actually transferring the nodes. So this is contained in debugger. So this is a simple structure that we have. There are, there are actually two parts. One is pillar and uh, the other is a prophet. So let's have a look at the pillar. So it will go it will go under pool cell metrics from Prometheus. And for each metric, there will be a corresponding case. So each metric have a, one specific failure, and there will be a specific healing or recovery process. And we will have this matching process, and we will have a re remote pathway to run the recovery. So this is kind of like a simple failure that can be recovered. And uh, the second part is also a simple one that we just started, profit. It would have some simple predictions. So for instance, some of the metrics that we cannot have this kind of like judgment, so we cannot get the failure quite quickly, so we have this prediction, and through some algorithm, we will have this kind of like uh, pre-cautious warnings and uh, send some alert. If it is detected, we will then trigger our developers to monitor it manually. Because we only just to start this process and uh, we don't actually observe any abnormalities here. So these are all my uh, sharing with you. Thank you for your attention. Do we have any questions? Hello, I want to ask for us if you want to uh, identify the problems within one net. So what is the frequency of uh, uh, collecting the metrics? And if we're doing it in a high frequency way, how can we solve it? Because once they have a high frequency and may have too much noise, so how do you solve this problem? So uh, when we are collecting these, uh, we do it in different uh, different layers. For some of the metrics, can do it in two minutes, for example, the leak of the uh, memory. And even though they have been accumulated for a while, it won't have too much influence for this kind of uh, metrics, we will just uh, uh, collect them for one hour, two hour. But for some of the other metrics that may have bigger influence, we might do it in one minute or two minutes. And for these abnormalities, once we have identified these kind of abnormalities, it means that there are already some problems existing. So the noise might be few relating to this. Well, actually, I want to ask a problem because uh, you know that the system may have various kinds of problems. But for your MPD, how to monitor these various kinds of failures? So, um, we have a summary of this, of all of these failures. Actually, uh, when I first do this kind of uh, a, a normal monitoring of the kernel, I don't have good solutions. I just always ask our colleagues in this regard. For example, will the will there be any keywords um, alarm or warning in the kernel? And I will just match them. But sometimes this may relate to the 
an indication of the context. So, for example, the panic. Maybe a several days ago, they already have the signs of this. How do you achieve? Well, for us, we won't do too complicated matching. We'll only do some of the relatively simple matching. Once the keywords are identified, we think that it, there might be some problems. So once these kind of problems, like the error, it means that there are some problems in the kernel. So maybe still uh, we are not doing it in a quite in-depth way. And another problem is that for Prometheus, it has a TFCB. And do you also have um, customized some of the TFCB uh, interface? Because your Ali cloud, your system has accumulated loads of the data. Well, actually, on the Prometheus and our cloud product, for the continuous um, storage and uh, in our company for the TSTB, we are considering this whether we will just use our internal data and or to do it, uh, put it directly to MQ. Thank you. So currently, we are still using the TSTB to do this. Well, if I were. Oh. Well, I want to ask a problem. As for the service monitor that you have said, there is an access uh, standard. As for the Prometheus, so for every uh, service and a microservice targeting each of these services, there are some uh, standardized uh, qualification metrics. For example, the failure rate, do you have such kind of uh, metrics regarding this? Well, uh, considering the problems that we have met, so actually, we have a requirement of the success rate. Once you have been scheduled for 100 times, the success rate must be around 99 times, and also there are some re uh, requirements of the time. So you cannot spend too many time. So actually, for every interface, you will just uh, uh, the main interface, yes. For example, uh, in the container sector, we will just focus about the start, delete, stop, this kind of key interface. As for update, this kind of other interface we will put less attention because for this main interface, they will directly influence some of the content that may be felt by the customers. So we will do some of the detailed. Okay, I understand it. So I will ask, uh, just now you have said that in the process of the monitoring, most of them are based on the relatively underlying level. But if I want to uh, develop some uh, database-related business based on Kubernetes, and uh, I have the uh, business level, Failure. So when I meet some of the failures, I need to restart the container. But this kind of uh, uh, authority is controlled in your hand. So, so how do you combine this kind of uh, failure control with the business? So based on Kubernetes. So when we are doing the auto healing, we will do the kind of uh, uh, auto transformation. So before using the Kubernetes migration, we will just uh, do it in two phases. In, in starting the container, we will just uh, schedule our relevant interface to start the container. Also uh, within this container, we have another system to do some of the business-related uh, scheduling, and the monitor, and the, and the healing. So when the business they are the, a monitor its own problems, it will just be um, coupled with some of the house checks. So once these kind of failures is delivered to the underlying, we need to 
eliminate it. So actually, so the business can only find these failures and to just deliver the signs to the underlying system and to recover this failure. If the business cannot solve it, actually our logic towards it. Uh, we don't have too much uh, understanding of the logic of it, so we only uh, can have some of the basic failure uh, checking. And also you have mentioned the debug debugger component. I want to ask for that service during the release and the usage. Does it have any of its own problems like the bug or uh, availability? Actually, we will use many of the instances to solve it, but actually for the bug, while well, we are healing it, some of the problems are not from one machine or two machines. We we'll also use we might also use one policy. Some of them are in the automated or uh, wholly automated, or some of the manual methods. We will just uh, for every um, healing might be finished in different batches. Some of them are uh, already uh, completed online. Okay, thank you. I want to ask a question. You have talked about the failure practice because usually testing environment is not totally the same with the production environment. So how do you do the kind of practice? Usually we do it on the online environment. From the initial stage of the practice, we kind of uh, have a kind of test application. So actually for every business, we would just uh, apply a similar application and uh, after the running, as for the machine, we'll do some of the added operation. For example, cut the power or the internet. If it cannot be recovered, then we think that we need to have a further improvement of the problems exposing. So, time is limited. 